Joining us on the podcast today is Bianca Solari. Bianca is a digital media expert with over seven years experience in sports, hospitality, and wellness. She's an advocate for mental health and well-being, as well as a fitness enthusiast. Bianca has lived in Philadelphia for over six years and is very passionate about her city and community. Bianca is somebody who accidentally, on purpose, created a community and brought a movement to the city of Philadelphia. Bianca inspires me with her why not mentality and tenacious, tenacious work ethic. Bianca is a natural leader who inspires others through action and a willingness to go first, which is one of my personal definitions of what it is to be a leader. Bianca, I am so excited to be having this conversation with you. We're going to get into the name of the movement and what it actually is in a minute. But before we go there, share with the people listening to this episode a little bit about yourself and how you kind of ended up being in a position where somebody's talking to you about starting a movement in Philadelphia. Yeah, I can't believe that this is even happening, to be honest. But um, a little bit about me. I was grew up in South Jersey, right over the bridge from Philadelphia. Um, during my growth after high school and college, I found myself a little bit all over the East Coast, but eventually ended up back at home. Um, nowhere feels like home quite like Philly does. Um, and through my career choices, I have found, um, I've honed in my skill doing digital media and social media management. I've worked for global brands. I've worked for small brands. Um, but all in all, um, my biggest passion is working with a company or brand that has aligned goals like I do, um, specifically giving back to the community. Um, and I was lucky enough to have stumbled across uh, City Girls Who Walk, um, which is a movement started by Brianna Joy in New York. She's an influencer in New York, so she already had a huge following and um, was able to start City Girls Who Walk, which is a walking group once a week. Uh, they meet in New York, I think at noon at Central Park. And as soon as I saw it, I my first thought, weirdly enough, was like, I want to go to New York and walk, um, which is a way bigger hassle than just starting your own walking group in your own backyard. So um, to which I was like, hey, let's see if we can do this. If 10 of my friends show up and I get to walk with 10 of my friends and excellent. Um, and here we are, 11.6K followers later and averaging about 100 to 200 girls per walk. Can't really be yeah. there. No, that's, it's really amazing. And I think the thing that inspires me the most about your story is that, you know, a lot of us are on social media and we see the thing about take a mental health walk or the hot girl walk is yeah. a thing. Um, and mm -hmm. especially, you know, in a city like Philadelphia or pretty much any city, we live in an environment where we're surrounded by a lot of people, but we might not necessarily like know our neighbors or have people that we feel like we could like go walk around the neighborhood with or potentially even feel like safe to totally. walk around the neighborhood. Um, so I think right there, that is a huge benefit to just being able to gather together um, and do these walks. So knowing that this is kind of a little bit of a marriage between mental health and physical well-being, why does that appeal to you? How has that played a role in your personal journey? Yeah, absolutely. So as soon as I moved to Philly, I didn't have like a ton of friends. And the way I met friends was by going to different studios and gym and just kind of finding people that I vibe with. Uh, obviously, we have like-minded personalities. If we're going to be working out together, we're obviously like in these classes. So we already have something in common. Um, and I have most of my best friends right now are from people that I've met in a gym space. And from there, I just kind of got really well connected in um, the Philly fitness community. It's as big of a city we are. It is a very tight knit community. So um, once you start knowing people, it's awesome. And same with mental health. Um, I've been an advocate for mental health um, for about, I would say, 11 years now is when I started really struggling myself. Um, and I know that some days are obviously going to be harder than others. Um, and Throughout all my medicine and anything that I've tried to overcome my mental health problems, nothing really has done the trick quite like working out or fitness in any capacity. Um, from walking, riding a bike, taking a spin class, weightlifting, anything, that really is what gets my mind and body like really at its true core. So um, bringing both together was just kind of like 
made sense, you know, meet new people, uh, do what's good for your, your brain. Um, and sometimes I just like, I don't even know that I'm like not feeling great. And I go on a walk and I'm like, whoa, like it's just like a weight lifted off my shoulders. So it's just a nice um, coercion of both. Yeah. And I think community in and of itself is so healing. And I know that your walks really encourage people to be able to show up by themselves, right? Like you don't have to bring a friend or come with a group of friends. You'll make friends along the way. Um, it's a great way for people who feel maybe a little bit alone and isolated in, in their experience to come and just be a part of something, right? Like we love feeling like we're a part of something. We love feeling like we have purpose and nothing's going to ignite that in someone quite like walking like a hundred strong, you know, through different yeah. areas of Philadelphia. I saw that you all did a walk when we're recording this. Uh, the Eagles are going to the Super Bowl. My um, green when we're recording this. Yeah. <laughs> um, when this drops, we'll know if they won or not. So if you're watching the video, Woo! you can see me. Yeah, we will. <laughs> Um, but Philly Girls actually did a walk on the heels of the Philadelphia win. <laughs> Man, it is like not to like to my own horn, like the fact that I started Philly Girls and Walk in 2022, the Eagles are doing really well. I don't want to say that I started the movement of the Eagles winning, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Uh, and we also have, to be fair, a lot of people from other cities. And I think that's um, one of the uh, things with Philly Girls Who Walk is why I started it. During COVID, a lot of people, because they were able to be remote, um, ended up moving here. And they're transplants from other cities or even just like right outside in Jersey or out in the burb ended up moving to the city because they were able to do remote work that they weren't able to do before. Um, and then they moved here remote in COVID and like, oh, how do I make friends now? So it's kind of like a little tough when you're in a lockdown in a new city. So that was part of the plan with Philly Girls to Walk. It's like, okay, well, all these people that are now working from home, this gives us an opportunity to A, get outside, B, meet people that they've been in the city for so long and they haven't been able to make new friends and C, see the beautiful city of Philadelphia. Uh, we change up our uh -huh. roots so that we can view like the prettiest parts and just like kind of explore the city, which even I living here for six, seven years, there was like a walk we did recently. I was like, I don't know if I've ever even walked down here. So yeah, it's free. And uh, look, the Eagles, we're, I think we're going to be doing a Super Adult Bowl Sunday walk for the yes. Super Bowl. <laughs> so, so we were, after we won the NFC Championship game, I posted, that was like, we were all on Broad Street. I was like, this is the biggest Philly Girls who won't turn out yet. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, so yeah, the more people that know, the better. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think you bring up a really important point in terms of being able to find community activities to be a part of because a lot of us are working from home now, myself included. I used to go to an office and even though I was seeing clients one on one in an office, in between sessions, I still had other therapists there. You know, we would still like get lunch together. There was still like, you know, that sense of community. And, you know, as much as I love my fiance who also works from home. Um, and my dogs, right? Huge, huge work from home perk right there. Um, it, it, it is a little bit lonely. Uh, so being right. able to get out and get connected with community is just very nourishing for the soul. And we as human beings are meant to live in community and we're really not living that way. Um, so any chance that we can get to kind of connect to other people, that's going to be great for our mental, emotional and relational health as well. And I think that's such a huge piece of this. And you know, you just named a lot of things that are great benefits and have been amazing outcomes. But to be honest, I know a little bit of the backstory here, though those weren't really the things that you were thinking about when you started this whole thing. It yeah. was actually pretty simple in terms right. of the thought process. So yeah. can you kind of take us back in time and talk about that a little bit? Yeah, like like I mentioned before, when I said my first thought was like, oh, like let's go up to New York for a walk. And I was like, we have this here. So um, my first step was I did a poll on my personal Instagram and I was like, if I started a walking group, would people walk with me? My goal was legitimately just to get outside and walk once a week with people. That was it. Like, I just wanted to get more steps in because I'm working from home. I'm sitting down all the time. 
So um, that was my biggest goal was truly just to get some extra stuff. And um, then I went from there uh, with my digital media background. I was like, okay, people are saying yes. It's people that I follow. And if 10 of their friends come, et cetera, it just kind of will expand. So um, we had the first walk and it I, over 100 girls showed to the first walk, which is like still shocks me to this day. Um, and then from there, I kind of like learned a little bit more about the people that were coming and they were saying that they were transplant haven't been able to meet new friends, wanting to get out of the house for their mental health to walk, needing extra time with their dogs to walk outside and go on a longer walk, wanting to feel safe. Um, but like the why behind it just kept growing and growing as the walks came because I started to get to know the people and why they were showing up for themselves. Um, whereas it just kind of started just, just to walk. <laughs> but it's so much more than that now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that really goes back to it really started with a why not, right? It really started with a, okay, this thing exists in this place. Why can't this thing also exist here? Oh, nobody else is doing it. Okay, I I'll do it. Um, and really just having it be that simple and also having the expectation be very in line with your intention, right? The intention wasn't, I'm going to create this movement where hundreds of people show up and walk with me. The intention was, this is something that I know is going to be really nourishing for me. And if people want to join me, that's amazing. If nobody else shows up or if I'm just walking with a few of my best friends, that's okay too. Yeah. Um, but I think really having that pure intention of knowing that you're really doing this for, I don't like this phrase, but I feel like it fits here, like for the right reasons, right? Like this, yeah. <laughs> this wasn't starting as like a vanity metric, like glamour product, like project, like, oh my gosh, look at me. Like I'm yeah. the leader of this. A lot of people don't even know that like you're actually the no, solo I try to keep that under wraps. I'm like blowing you up. Like this I, 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 I eat, walk, I'll get like, uh, whoever runs your Instagram, tell them they're doing a great job. I'm like, yeah, I do that. And they're like, oh, like, well, whoever like sends the emails, tell them they're doing a great job. I'm like, still me. Um, it is definitely a, a passion project that I have done on my own. Um, and it hasn't gotten to the extent where I think I need to have help. I obviously have my friends who like, if I need someone to lead a walk and I can't be there, people are always willing to help step up. Um, but I, if people, the people that know me know that I don't love being like the person in, in the spotlight. I love being behind the camera, behind everything. Um, and just kind of seeing things flourish that I do, like from like concept to creation, I like to be able to watch it instead of be in it. Uh, any group photo you see of Philly Girls Who Walk, I won't be in it. I take the picture. That's the rule. Everyone knows it. So um, yeah, it is kind of just like, let it do its thing. And here we are. Okay. Yeah. And I think that that's a really important message for a lot of people listening to this is that we have this concept of what it means to be a leader, right? And a leader is the person that's like standing on the podium in the middle of the square, shouting their message for other people to come follow them. But there's a lot of different types of leaders and there's a lot of different types of leadership. And I think that there is a type of leader that's kind of like a push from behind instead of a pull from ahead type of leader. And that's the person who's just kind of going to gently like create things with a, a gentle nudge and they're going to keep going. And you might not see them because they're actually like behind you and they're creating yeah. the momentum from behind you. Um, and then here's this thing that it's like, OK, who's in charge of this? And nobody might know, but there was a single driving force at the back of the train that really started putting things into motion. And so this is to remind people that just because you don't enjoy being in the spotlight and just because you don't think that you want to be the person who stands up and gives speeches or whatever, that doesn't mean that you can't have purpose and mission and take on a leadership role. It can look and feel however you want it to and whatever is comfortable for you. Absolutely. And I think uh, like even to this day, I start every walk with a bit of a like, Hey, everyone. Thanks for coming out. I usually ask new people to raise their hand or if people came on their own, raise their hand. I give the route that we're walking and I say, let's go. It's like less than 30 seconds of me talking, uh, but that's as big as me getting on some sort of podium to say people, talk to people. I think, um, like you said, like the nudging, I think that the people that come to our walks, especially if they are coming alone, they do need that gentle nudge of like, Hey, like, we'll, we're here. We'll be here every week. When you're ready, we'll be here. 
Um, if not, like, I don't want to be the like, you must walk with us. Like you, like everyone in the city must come walk. Like, I think people will find it on their own time. And it just feels like a lot more organic. Now, but mm -hmm. yeah. And let's, let's be honest here. You have two dogs that usually join you for walks and they're way more the star of the show than oh, you are. The way that people love my dogs is truly is unbelievable. But no, Cannoli did have a birthday walk. We, uh, I, oh, yeah, it was a walk on her birthday and I've never seen someone get so much attention. Um, so they are the star of the show and all of the dogs that show up truly is a huge reason why I keep doing this because we meet new dogs <laughs> all the time. The cutest, um, I try, I remember a lot of their names as opposed to their human names, which I'm trying to get better at. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, also just like the fact that like being around animals is like proven to increase your mental health too, if you like animals, but like, uh, spending time with like just happy dogs on a walk. I mean, you can't beat it. Yeah. And so I've seen footage of your walks and there are lots of dogs. There's babies. There's babies. Uh, as well. There's lots of babies. That's why. Um, so you can bring your dog, you can bring your baby. Um, and, you know, also just to kind of speak a little bit into the like handle that you chose, who is welcome on these walks? Yeah, absolutely. So I did want to play off city girls who walk to know that we did have a influence based on that. So I uh, ended up doing silly girls who walk has a nice ring to it. It does not mean just girls can come. We are open. We are inclusive to all. Um, I get questions all the time. Can I bring my dog? Can I bring my baby? Can I bring my cat in a stroller? Can I bring my partner? Can I bring my nephew? Like, yes, the answer is always going to be yes. If your person, whoever they are, wants to go for a walk, go ahead. You know, it's open to all, inclusive. I'm not trying to gatekeep walking in the city of Philadelphia. <laughs> uh, that's not my goal here. Um, it is, it, the name just kind of has a ring to it, you know? Um, but trust me, all of my close friends, all of their fiancés or boyfriends, they want to come on walks and I'm the one telling them to come. Their girlfriends are like, no, this is my time. You guys don't get to come. So any and all are welcome. <laughs> And, you know, I think also just talking a little bit about the practicality of starting this, right? Picking that name actually was a little bit strategic, right? Because we have to think about, like, people who are going to be interested in this type of thing, what are they going to be searching for? What are they going to be looking for? How am I going to let the people know that this is a thing that's actually available to them in their city? So can you say a little bit more about, okay, cool, like you have this awesome background, you have this awesome idea, you know that this is something that you would like to do, whether it blows up or not, where do you go from there? Yeah, so I mean, it really just comes down to like my background in social media and digital media. Um, I'm lucky to have had a lot of experiences that have taught me how to build a platform and grow an audience. Um, and my first instinct was, this is only going to be social media. It's going to be natural growth, grassroots approach, um, and connect also like word of mouth. So um, just kind of going on social media using hashtag hot girl walk, mental health walk, Philly walk, hashtag Philly mental health walk. It attracts people that are looking to do those kind of things. Um, and even if it's not in your city, you see hashtag mental health walk and all these other cities that have since grown, like the New York chapter, uh, like I know Boston and Chicago are really big, DC, like you'll be able to find it in your city that way. So that was really what I focused on and growing um, and making sure to get it out there. And I also used Facebook groups, um, which are like, like Facebook does kind of seem like old, but in my personal social media, like profession, I think it's huge to grow an, an grassroots approach. Uh, like I reached out to our, my Fairmount, I live in Fairmount in Philly. We have like a Fairmount neighborhood group. I just posted, Hey, I started this walking group. Give us a follow, come walk with us. And that also increased my audience from, instead of just having like 19 to 25 year olds that are on Instagram, this got like the older generation, which have the kid, which live in a neighborhood that are still looking to walk. And like walking is a universal thing. You know, it's like, you don't need to be a certain age, race, like body type. It is like you can do it. And I want everyone to know that. So just kind of leaning into word of mouth and social media, it really, it really all worked out.
Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think the other highlighting feature there is that you reached out, right? That's a big thing that a lot of us are kind of like, okay, like I have this thing and maybe I want people to know about it. Maybe you're listening to this and you're like a coach or a therapist or a healer or whatever. And you're kind of like in your own little bubble. And the reality is there's like so many other people around that are in their own little bubble, but we can connect those bubbles and then have a much bigger bubble. And in terms of increasing audience, right, and just on social media, letting people know that you're available and you're there and what it is that you stand for, um, that cross-pollination is really, really important. And I think especially in this whole work from home environment, a lot of us have kind of forgotten to reach out for referrals. And, you know, it, it's such a simple thing that like back in the day, like if you wanted people to know about you, you had to physically go out into the world and network and, you know, do business lunches and let people know that like, this is who you are and this is what you're about. Um, and then you would be able to know that there's other people out there who know that you exist and know what you stand for and what you're doing. And I think it's really interesting because I actually knew about the walks before I knew you were behind so, them, which that was, was the previous day. So wild um, because you you were sharing. And I was like, wait, like, I've seen that. Like, I've seen that on, on Instagram. And you're like, yeah, that's me. Like, I, I did that. I was like, what? what? Yeah. And I, I, I as a therapist, have been, like, referring people to your walks. And here it's it's you. And you're you're the one who started the whole thing. And that was like a really amazing moment because I was like, wow, that's so, that's so powerful. And like, you really didn't have a whole big engine behind you. This was just like a person with, yeah. a, with a little bit of a plan and a lot of heart. Yeah. And I think like you mentioned before, like people just get so in their own way. And I am, I was that person. I still am sometimes like we all kind of get stuck in like thinking too much about it, but this was like the one thing. And I, the timing of my life really had a lot to do with it that I was in a space where I was like why would it why would I get in my own way with this like what's the worst that could happen I always say like for anything if it's a, it's a no if you don't ask it's a no if you don't try so like you got to do both and if I do if I try and it fails at least I tried so mm. yeah yeah I absolutely love that attitude and I think that we all have something really important to offer and a lot of times people, to your point, get in, in their own way and they doubt what it is that they have to offer. And even if you are still doubting yourself, you can kind of still do it anyway. You can still do it with the doubts. You can still go ahead and try because the alternative is not trying, right? And it's whatever you feel like you can live with at the end of the day. And, you know, I know that you and I have had conversations about okay, like, what if you if you didn't do the thing? What if you didn't try? Would you have always been wondering, like, what if? And yeah. I feel like that's actually a lot more of a motivator than people allow it to be um, when they're thinking about what they can and cannot achieve in their lives. Yeah, like, imagine I just didn't do this and then I, like, wondered forever, like, what it could have been. Like, that would have been so much harder on my heart and soul than if, like, I tried and it failed. You know, like at least I tried like the what if I think in every aspect of life can like really hurt people. So I always recommend trying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And when we talk about trying and how that kind of relates to your own tenacity when it comes to encouraging people to go out and to do this. Has this been like the easiest smooth sailing thing that you've done in your life? Or is it hard to stand in leadership? Or is it a little bit of both? It's definitely a little bit of both. I think um, with the speed that Silly Girls Who Walk grew, uh, like, I, like I started May 12th was our first walk. It's February now. So it hasn't been a full year. We're at 11.6 thousand followers. That's a lot of responsibility. Um, organic growth. Like I didn't pay for any of that. So that means there's no bots that I'm talking to. Like these are almost 12,000 real people that are coming to my page for something. So that is a lot of responsibility that is stressful. Um, and 
while it has been like very natural and easygoing, you're gonna have people that try to shoot you down no matter what, no matter like, even if you're like curing cancer, like someone will find a way to like negate what you're doing. Um, but at the end of the day, what I do, like when, if there's an issue where I think that someone's not happy with something, which is very unlikely, if it's 10 people, there's 11,590 other that are supporting me. Um, so I think with anybody that has a platform um, and has that kind of responsibility that they feel that I, is like on their shoulders, um, just know that the people that are supporting you are, there's way more of them than there are the people that want to see you fail. And people that want to see you fail is not a reflection on you. It's a reflection on them. Um, so it honestly has taught me so much about myself and uh, things that I can do on my own. Um, and yeah, it's, well, it's been like, it feels like easy because it hasn't been like work for me, but it's also like, okay, well, I also have 12,000 people that are following me that are like, kind of like, you know, anything could happen. So it is a lot of responsibility for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, we haven't really talked about this much on the podcast yet, but I feel like it would be a good time to bring up the impact that cancel culture has when people are thinking about stepping into leadership. They're thinking about, you know, even if it's just using their voice to speak on something on their personal platform or, you know, starting their own movement or, putting an offer out there, right? If you're a business owner and you're listening to this, um, cancel culture is something that's real and prevalent and definitely exists. And I know in your work in social media, like you have experienced this. And so you could maybe talk a little bit to cancel culture and how people can interact with that in a way that helps them to still stand up and use their voice and speak while knowing that this is something that's real and present. Totally. Yeah. Cancel culture is something that before I was in some sort of like influence role that I was just kind of like, ah, it's cancel culture. But now that I'm kind of in it, it, it's something that's like actually terrifying to think that like anything I say or do could fall back on my brand and hinder my brand. Um, so I think when I started Philly Girls Walk, like I said, in May of 2022, um, we were great. It was awesome. Things kind of picked up. We also then started having a lot of political issues in our country. Um, Roe v. Wade overturned, and it was something that I personally disagreed with. So it was, and we're a women's mostly group. So when that kind of happened, I decided that I wanted to make a statement on it we would like to walk together in a march so-and-so i did get a lot of feedback that people in my group didn't support that and that's okay um everyone's entitled to their own opinion um but i'm gonna do what i think is right at the end of the day and i think that for cancel culture this is what i continue to tell myself it's like if i i like to think that 30 years of life i have a good head on my shoulders i've experienced a lot and i know the difference between right and wrong and i like to think that a lot of the people that follow me have the same agreement like i said before not everyone's going to agree with you but it is it's always like a one percent it really is and um if people really want to cancel you i think that they have to try really hard if it's something small if that makes sense i just feel like Thinking too much about something before you post it or before you like do something about it. I think that thinking too much is what creates this kind of like you're almost like manifesting like, oh my God, these people might cancel me if I do this. So it's kind of like just go with your gut. If you think it's right, think it's right. Um, I had, I'm happy to give this example. I had a walk scheduled on a Saturday with a partner in Center City. Um, and our, because of rain, we had to delay it to a Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. It happened to be Yom Kippur, um, something that I wasn't aware of uh, because I was ignorant to the fact of the holiday traditions. I got a lot of heat on social media from um, Jewish members that were saying, I won't be able to attend because I'll be fasting all day. Unfortunately, it wasn't something I could cancel because of the partners, but there were people that tried to cancel me for doing this. Um, 
it terrified me. It made me so upset. But what it came down to is, what, was I genuinely trying to make in something anti-Jewish? No, no, that was never my thing. People that know me know that's not it. Um, so I think it really just comes to down to who you are as a person. And if you think you're doing the right thing, you're going to do the right thing. And um, just don't be afraid because the more you like you have that fear, it really does like radiate and people can sense the fact that you're feeling a certain way about it. So mm -hmm. that's my biggest. Yeah. Advice. And it, it's interesting because as um, as a therapist, like I've spent a lot of time looking at like cults, right? Because that's in terms of like psychology, that's like a really, really fascinating leadership scenario to look at. And this is where like people can, there can be like this extreme where it's like, oh, well, everything I say is right and everyone needs to agree with me and everyone needs to believe in me. And if you don't believe in me, then, you know, you're wrong and there's going to be hard things coming to you because you're not agreeing with me. And that's not at all like what we're talking about. What we're talking about is knowing that you're doing the best with what you have, whether that's resources, knowledge, awareness. And a good leader is somebody who's always open to receiving feedback. It is always open to being educated about things. And that's where, you know, that was not something that you were aware of. People brought it to your awareness. Is that something that you're going to pay attention to in the future? Absolutely. Well, no, um, but you know that it wasn't your intention to exclude any particular party by scheduling the walk at that time. And so I think, again, it goes back to what we were saying about having intention and knowing what your intention is. And that's the thing that's going to allow you to look at yourself in the mirror at the end of the day and be like, you know what? I know that I'm doing the best that I can with this. I know that I have good intentions. And I also know that I'm a human being and I don't know what I don't know. And I'm open to receiving and learning. And I think that ultimately that's the best that we can do. And if people are going to come after you for being a human being, right? Because we're never going to know everything. We're never going to do the exact perfect thing all of the time. We're humans. We're imperfect. We're going to mess up. We're going to make mistakes. And it's also why it's so hard to go first. It's why it's so hard to be a leader. It's why it comes with, you know, so much fear and having to have conversations with that fear because that fear is ultimately what's going to help you maintain your integrity because you care, right? You didn't yeah. care. You wouldn't have any fear, exactly. but it's also the thing that can hold you back and silence your voice. So it's kind of finding that balance between not doing things from a place of fear or versus like literally not doing things from a place yeah. of fear. Um, and also being willing to put yourself out there and know your intentions at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said before, I'd rather try and fail than not try at all. And I've just learned so much about everything because of this walk and I like this walking group and I told I mean after that all happened like while I was really 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 hard on myself for like not knowing I also was so grateful because if that had not all happened I would not have ever learned honestly like ever which is like somewhat sad to say but also like it really opened my eyes to a whole different world and taught me and I think a lot of other people, not just me. So it was like a lot of other people in the group about it. Um, and I think that now it just kind of, you know, it's, it was a mistake and people make mistakes. And I think that you need to be gentle on yourself if you are in a position of leadership, um, knowing that this is not going to fall on anyone else. You know what I mean? So it's like, okay, if I, it happened and I was like, I'm going to own this, obviously, like why? And I think people that try to like back away from owning things, um, that's like really where the issue comes in. Yeah. And I think that that's actually where, to me, like when I see cancel culture becomes that thing that actually can help hold people accountable. Because yeah. when we do see people in positions of influence, right, I'm not necessarily going to see positions of leadership because I, I firmly feel that a leader is something that you are. It's not a position that you're assigned or that you take for yourself. So people in positions of influence, right? So like celebrities, you know, uh, you know, people who have, you know, just a lot of money, right? Because in our yeah. society, if you have a lot of money, you get a platform essentially. 
Um, and they, because of that level of privilege, don't have anyone holding them accountable, essentially. So there's kind of been this culture of them being able to do and say and whatever, whatever they want to. But now, because of social media, the masses can actually talk back and be like, um, actually, that's not cool. That's not okay. You are definitely being this. You're being, you know, ex exclusionary. You are being, you know, racist or whatever it is that's coming up. People can actually speak back to these influential people. And I think in that regard, cancel culture is actually kind of useful. But again, that's where is that person going to come back and be like, oh my gosh, guys, like I had no idea. I am so sorry. Genuinely, I am so sorry. I didn't know. Thank you for educating me. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. I appreciate it so much. We're going to respond to that a lot differently than someone's like, yeah, no, I'm still going to do and say whatever the heck I want. Like, I don't care what you feel about it. Because ultimately, did you still have to go through with having the walk when it was scheduled? Yes, because you were in partnership with somebody. It wasn't your intention to be, you know, exclusionary in any way, shape, or form. So you still did have to go through it. But it wasn't without you saying, you know what? Thank you so much for bringing this to my attention. This is something that I'm now going to take into account moving forward. And that, to me, shows leadership. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that a lot of cancel culture, too, has to do with how big of an influence you are and where people choose to give their feedback. I, from day one, have been open to feedback because this is a grassroots approach. The only way I will learn is if people give me feedback. Um, so I've been open to feedback, my DMs, my email, anything. Um, and I got a lot of DMs supporting me, telling me, helping me, like, learn new things like if you want to like learn more about jewish culture please feel free to dm me like amazing like thank you you know it's like and whereas some people are keyboard warriors and will get behind you and attack you in the comment section usually it's like a kim kardashian where they like have millions of followers so it's like they're never gonna see it but like i see every comment you know so it's like it, i i really appreciate people that are so genuine and kind and forgiving um, because, you know, I made a mistake. And if 12,000 people didn't want to forgive me, then I wouldn't be here right now. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I think in addition to that, we're speaking about it from the place of the person who's receiving, but also to speak to the person who is giving, there are ways that we can provide feedback and still be compassionate and still be understanding. And still remember at the end of the day, you know, again, like unless you're like you know, tweeting Kim K or something yes. like that, most of the time, like there is a single human being who's going to be on the receiving end of whatever it is that you're writing, whether that's a customer service rep or a social media manager yes. um, or somebody who's just being, you know, hired to look come. It doesn't really matter. There's still going to be a human being at the receiving end of that. And being mindful of how you are choosing to communicate that feedback and making sure it's in a way that is actually helpful and not harmful so that the person can take it as a way to have a learning opportunity or as a way to expand their consciousness and awareness. Um, I feel like that's something else that we really need to talk about that I wish we didn't have to talk about. I wish we could just kind of yeah. like you know, expect that people are going to treat other people the way that they would like to be treated, but you put them behind a screen and a keyboard and things can get a little ugly. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that also when people come, like I said, I had private DMs and then I had public comments and the public comments are obviously the ones I am focused on because this is public facing and this is what is coming. The comments I don't think were terrible. However, pe when you do come at people in the public comments and you are coming out aggressive in any situation i'm not talking about my own that is like an automatically i or whoever is in this role of influence gets defensive because now you're coming at them publicly and you're like whoa 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 you know what i mean so i think that's what kind of starts this like whole cancel culture like wanting to defend yourself but like also be like i want to learn but like also don't come at me like that so there is definitely a fine line of how to give feedback and receive feedback. Um, but 
people will do what they want to do at the end of the day. It, you know, it is true. And it, most of us, you know, to be honest, it, it goes beyond what is happening on social media, right? Most of us are not really taught effective, compassionate communication skills. Like it's a lot of my job security as a therapist and a coach is because we're all out here not knowing what the hell to do and how to properly yeah. communicate to each other. So it, it makes a lot of sense that then you, you know, depersonalize it even more and it's going to be even more pervasive in the fact that people are really don't know how to create that exchange where it is a safe space for somebody to give and receive. Um, and, you know, just to kind of tie that up a little bit, what do you feel like this has brought into your life personally? Beyond the benefits of, you know, being in a group and being in community and being just like the lessons and the things that have helped you grow personally, what has kind of like taking this leap to step into leadership given to you? It has brought so much fulfillment into my life that I didn't think I needed, like I didn't know was missing. Um, and it, it just like has allowed my life to be, it feels like fully round. Like I don't feel like there's a piece missing now. Um, knowing that I, like me little old me for some reason is the reason that someone's day is better or someone just met a new friend and that like they're excited about it um that like really just like bring like I get so emotional thinking about it every time and just knowing that I'm like the generator behind that and like I said before like I'm not in the spotlight for it is truly um why I keep doing it and it's just I mean, the city of Philadelphia in general, I think, I mean, we're the city of brotherly love. So it, it the community does itself. And um, I, I just think that knowing that people, when I, if I had this group six years ago, when I came into Philadelphia, it would have changed my life. So knowing that like I'm doing my old self saver is really what it comes down to. Um, I've learned so many lessons about myself. I've learned so much about other people. I've met new people. Um, and it really, it just really brings a lot of fulfillment into my life. Um, I love that. And I, and if that's not enough of a reason to like do the thing that you know is in your soul to do and you're like stopping yourself from doing it for whatever reason, I don't know what is. Yeah. Um, and you know, I'm just like sitting here smiling. For those of you who are like just listening to this, I'm sitting here smiling because a lot of the work that I do, especially in, you know, my coaching is helping people to find purpose because as human beings, it is such a core piece of what we need to feel like our lives have meaning. Yeah. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go and, you know, start a movement in a city or anything like that. Maybe your purpose is really showing up, you know, fully as a parent. Maybe your purpose is, you know, starting an Etsy shop and like helping people find joy with, you know, the jewelry that you're going to make. There's so many different ways to be on purpose and in purpose and be living whatever that purpose is. But a lot of times we don't know what our purpose is until we try different things out. And I can probably assume that prior to this happening, if I would have been like, oh, okay, Bianca, so your purpose is actually going to be starting a, you know, walking group in the city of that. You were like, what? Like, first of all, that's really fucking random. And like, secondly, like, no, me, I don't, I don't get it. But it was just something that you felt strong enough about and, you know, yeah, you had the fear, but you felt enough of a pool to kind of dive in. And now it is so clear that this is so much a part of your purpose and why you're here and what you're doing to help bring healing and connection to other people. And kind of doesn't get a, like better than that. Like, I'm like, that's, that's, that's pretty cool, you know, purpose to have. But the point here is that you wouldn't really have that level of fulfillment in your life if you hadn't taken that leap to just do the damn thing and get started. Yeah. yeah, no, it definitely, I always say that, I don't think I even said it yet, I am just over, not just over, a few months over a year sober. And that was like one of also the reasons I wanted to start Billy Girls Who Walk is because there are no sober activities really. Uh, but so I, like things either cost money or you have to drink 
to do them in the city, it feels like. So like, I feel like girls to walk, neither of those things. But I always say, if you had told me two years ago, I was a leader of a walking group and I was sober, I would have like trolled you. I would have like actually <laughs> laughed at you and made so much fun of you and been like, who do you think she is? You got it all wrong. So it is, it's been a lot of growth and self-reflection and I'm so glad I did it. Yeah. And uh, both of those things, all of those things happen one choice at a time, one yeah. decision at a time, one intention at a time, one moment where you were feeling the fear, but decided to move forward anyway. And I think that's a huge message to anyone listening to this, to really know that it, it doesn't matter what it is that you feel like you want to bring into your life, what it is that you want to achieve, what it is that you are feeling called to step into or to do, that it, it, it like listening to this, it might be like, okay, cool. Like, she, this is a really big thing, but it, it was one step at a time. It was yeah. one moment at a time that you kind of just kept aligning yourself with your vision. You kept aligning yourself with your highest self and choosing things based on what felt good and in alignment with her. Um, and just being consistent with making choices in alignment with that energy versus wherever you were at at the time. And it's not easy, right? Like there's, you've stumbled, you've fallen, you've had bad days. Like, you yeah. know, it hasn't been this whole like TikTok montage where you're like, oh yeah, like a year yeah. ago, my life was like this and now I'm like this and like, yeah. it's so great. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, it's, there's been some, but like it's getting back up, continuing to try because you can't not try. And I think that that is such a beautiful message to really kind of leave the people with today. Um, so Bianca, before I let you go, Philly Girls Who Walk, who is open to, you know, all genders, all, you know, identities, all people, how can people find you guys? How can people find something like that in their own city? How can maybe people start something if it's not in their city? What advice you have for people listening to this and being like, okay, yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah. Sign. Yeah. I think um, a lot, I've gotten so many DMs from people that are like, I'm following you from like Indianapolis and I want to start my own walking group. And yes, do it. Like, like we just said, like, don't wait for anyone. Like waiting on someone else to make your own decisions is just like not it. So um, I always recommend, you can find Philly Girls Who Walk at Philly Girls Who Walk on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook. If you are not on social media, phillygirlswhowalk.com, you can shoot me a little DM or message there. We have a group me, which is probably about 2,000 people in a group chat where you can talk about life and like talk about other things that you want to talk to, talk about people too. Um, and that's also a way for you to learn about when our walks are um, without social media, which I know a lot of people don't have. Good on you. Wish I could be you. Um, <laughs> it's, but if you want to find someone um, in a city near you, um, I know there are, I would like to say each major city probably has a city girl to walk or whichever. Um, like I said, Brianna Joy did an incredible job with the New York version that people just were like, let's do it. If you go to city girls who walk on Instagram, Brianna is following every single city that has a chapter of a city girls who walk. So um, highly recommend checking it out there. Um, and if you want to start your own, just do it. Literally, it's walking, getting to know people, petting dogs. It like there's just no reason people don't want to join you. I pro I like I truly promise. Um, so there's my dog. She she hurts. Kelly <laughs> wants to come on walk. All right, mom. Time for a walk. Um, yeah, we keep we say, keep saying the W word for anyone. Yeah, who exactly. Has. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, all right, Kelly. Yeah, I, I recommend taking the plunge and like worst case scenario, you at, go on a walk like with your friend. You know what I mean? Um, so don't wait for anyone to agree with you and think you have a right idea. It's a good idea. <laughs> well, we learned it here first, folks. It's a good it, idea. Um, um, <laughs> yeah, really. And, you know, Bianca, I just really want to close out because this was something that when I started this podcast, I was like thinking about who I wanted to have on. And I have been just so, so inspired, truly. Like, it is so amazing when you come across someone who's like, you know what? Why not? Fuck it. 
We're just going to try and see, yep. see what happens. I, I love that attitude. I love that mentality. And, and I think it's also important to know that it, it's a mentality that doesn't come without hardship and strife and questioning yourself and days when you're like on the floor being like, what is my life? Why am I doing this? Um, but really it's about that tenacity to continue to show up and to do the thing that's most in alignment with your highest self. And that is what I see you continue to do day in and day out. And I know there's so many people who are grateful that you are willing to put in the hard work and show up in leadership and go first, even if it's from behind so that they can have this community. So on behalf of everyone who is a part of that community, I do want to say thank you to thank you. you. And I appreciate you coming on today and having this really amazing conversation about all of the things related to not just, you know, having a mental health walking group, but also to being in leadership and a little bit about, you know, social media and cancel culture as well. Um, Bianca is very active um, on Philly Girls. So if you do have questions, definitely please uh, DM Bianca. She is a wealth of information. She's great at connecting people. And, you know, if you are in the area, definitely feel free to go and join a walk. Come for a walk with I. Thanks, Bianca. We'll talk soon. There you have it. Another episode of the Sacred Leadership Podcast on the books. I hope your time spent here served you and nourished you. Join us every Tuesday for more honest conversations and powerful insights. Remember, exceptional leaders share the wealth. Send this episode to someone who would benefit, leave a review to let others know about the show, and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Talk to you soon.